All right, it's time to do something educational. Today, we are going to talk about KD trees. I assume that you already have some basic CS knowledge. At least I don't have to explain you what is a tree. I mean, data structure, not a plan. And how to write a computer program. What is a KD tree? Wikipedia says that it's a space partitioning data structure for organizing points in a k-dimensional space. I guess that's why it's called KD tree, isn't it? There are 2D trees, 3D trees, depending on the amount of dimension we are working with. But for this video, let's assume that we have two dimensions for simplicity. But everything we are going to discuss here can be generalized and applied to any amount of dimensions, even though it might be hard to visualize anything after the fourth dimension. All right, we are in 2D space. This is Inkscape, by the way. Suppose we have a bunch of points on it. Yeah, that's enough. Next, we add another point and want to answer a question. What is the closest known point to our new point? That problem is known as nearest neighbor search. It's also known as a proximity search, but who cares? All right, how can we do that? Well, I guess we can just go through each individual known point and just pick the one with the closest distance. Let's implement that. Oh, and by the way, today we are programming in Python because I believe it's a good scripting language and it's really great for prototyping stuff. And that's exactly what we're doing. Wouldn't recommend it for developing complex systems though, but people still do that. Who am I to judge them? First, we need to know how to calculate distance between the points. If I remember correctly, that formula involves square root, so we need to import the math module. Let's define the distance function. This function takes two points. The first thing I want to do, I want to destructurize points. If somebody doesn't know what destructurizing means, it's basically a fancy word for doing that. I assume that point one and point two are tuples and I just destructurize them. I just extract their components. Next, I want to calculate the difference between the components of the vector. And finally, return the distance between the points. All right, let's see how it works. So I want to calculate the distance between, let's say, point one, one and point two, two. So the distance should be equal to square root of two. And yeah, this is exactly what it is. Yeah, this is square root of two. Once we have the distance function, we can try to find the closest neighbor. I'm going to define a function that takes two arguments. It takes all of the points and the new point. Our goal is to find the nearest neighbor to the new point in the set of all points. We're going to use a pretty straightforward iteration approach where we iterate all of the points and just maintain the best known result so far. To maintain the best known result, we have to store it somewhere. So let's define a function for best point, which is none at the moment, and best distance, simply to not recalculate it all the time. Let's iterate through all of the points. On each iteration, we're going to calculate the distance between the new point and the current point. Let's call it current distance. If the current distance is less the best known distance, that means we found the new best result. We have to store it. And after the iteration, we just return the best result. Another interesting thing is that at the beginning, the best point and the best distance are none. And at the first iteration, we will try to compare number and none. So we have to add another condition here. If best distance is none or less than best distance. That's pretty much it. We need some data to test it out. Let's take our picture that we drew before and save it as an SVG file. Okay, so here's the file. So now we have some source of data. Basically, we need to extract the coordinates of the circles. SVG file is an XML file. So we need the XML parsing library. The one that I use most of the time is element tree. Next, we need some function that takes an SVG file name and returns us all of the points inside of that file. Let's call that function get points from SVG. It takes SVG file name. First thing we need to do, we need to parse an XML file. 
we've got a tree, which is basically the root of the XML tree. Next, we need to iterate through all of the nodes. Luckily, element tree provides us an iterator, which traverses the DOM tree in depth first search style. It takes the name of the tag, but the tag circle is actually inside of the SVG namespace. As far as I can remember, to indicate the tag that is inside of some namespace, we have to do something like that. I might be wrong, we will see. So let's collect all of the circles. But that's not enough. We have to also transform the tag into a point. Let's write a separate function for that. So we're gonna take a circle, extract its coordinates, and construct a new point from it. Now we can use this function like that. And finally, we can return all of this. Okay, let's see how it works. SVG file is called points SVG. And as you can see, we've got all of the points, but that's not enough. As you can see in the point set, we have a special point, which is a pivot in the nearest neighbor search. We are searching the nearest neighbor for that point. We have to somehow distinguish it. What we can do here, let me edit the XML. We can assign a special ID on that point. Let's call it pivot. That ID will help us to identify this point while we're parsing it. Get points from SVG is not really a convenient function. What it does, it takes the file name, reads the data from file, parses it, and returns us the parsed data. This is not exactly what I want. What I want, I want to read the data, I want to read the tree, and perform a series of different queries on that tree to extract pivot and the rest of the points. I would like to break that function into two functions. So the first function will just read the data from the SVG file. We're going to call it read SVG file. What it does, it just returns the parse tree. And now we can transform this function into another function that takes tree instead of the file name. So yeah, I decided to call that function get all points because it gets all of the points. <laughs> This function becomes some sort of a query and we can construct more queries over the SVG tree. So we need a function that takes a point by its ID. It takes tree and point ID. I would also like to extract this tag name to a separate global name because I'm going to be reusing it a lot. Circle tag name. All right, now let's search for the point that has a specific ID. Uh, so we're looking for a tag that has attribute ID. And that attribute equals to point ID. This function is really similar to get all points, except it has two filters that helps it to find a point with a specific ID. Since ID is unique across the SVG document, we're going to expect this function to return either an empty list or a list with one element. Let's test it out. First, I'm going to load the SVG document. And then let's try to find the point by ID. So here's the point. We can even check if it's the actual pivot point. Yeah, it actually is. When we load all of the points, the entire set also contains a pivot. We want to be able to load the points without the pivot. So we need more query functions. What we can do here, we can utilize the SVG groups. SVG groups are special types of SVG objects that allow us to group other objects. Let me show you what I mean. I'm editing an SVG file in program called Inkscape. And in Inkscape, to group some objects, you have to select them and press Ctrl G. Let's save the document and see how it affected it. Let's open the saved document. Now, all of the red points are inside of some G tag, which actually allows us to distinguish them from the pivot. What I want to do is also to assign a special ID for that group. So we're going to have ID for pivot and we're going to have ID for the rest of the points. So let's just call them points. So now we know how to search for circles inside of an SVG document. We also need to do the same for the groups. I'm going to create another global constant, which is going to be called group tag name. It's really similar. It's basically a tag inside of an SVG namespace, but with name G. All right. I want to have a function get group by ID. It will take the SVG tree and group ID and return all of the points inside of that group. I iterate through all of the groups inside of the SVG document. 
I find the groups with that specific ID and get all of the points from that group and return them. Uh, so basically, group is a subtree in SVG document. That means I can treat it as the root. And since I treat it as the root, when I pass it to get all points, I get only the points inside of that specific group that we found. Let's have our data set somewhere in the global scope. Let's extract the pivot and the rest of the points. And now let's test our closest point function against that data set. What should be the result? Let me look it up. Visually, the closest one should be this one. Let me mark it with a special ID. So basically, I marked the visually closest point with the ID closest. Let's look it up. So here, we should expect these coordinates. Let's give it a try. And yeah, here they are. But the problem with this algorithm is that it's linear. That means if we had n times more points, it would work n times slower. In case of a million points, we had to check each individual point to see if it's closest one. It's a million of iterations. Can we do better than that? Well, apparently KD3 is all about that, being better than a linear algorithm, I mean.